This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. All right. Punch Punch it. it! This is what you can look forward to on episode 165 of Skywalking Through Neverland. Just breathe. Did we survive Celebration Orlando? My favorite moment was being able to attend Smooth Talking with Billy D. Williams. We see you raise hands smack dab on that stone. What do you think happened right before that? Oh, my God. What, the part where Hera narrates in the beginning, I started freaking out because I'm like, oh, my God, I don't want any of these characters to die. Who was the rebel spy the second time? It wasn't me. Our hour-long drinking around the world turned into about three hours long. And we wanted to do something to celebrate Easter. So what better way than to wear hoojib ears and bounce around the celebration dealer room floor? So this is where I have to tell you that season four is the final season of Star Wars Rebels. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Hello, Skywalkers. Listen. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing that was all started by a mouse. You are skywalking through Neverland. Hey, hey, Skywalkers! Welcome to Skywalking, Skywalking Through, Through Neverland. Neverland. This is your fun-filled Star Wars and Disney podcast that leads you on a tour through decades of fandom. If you are just joining us, I am Richard Woloski, and now everyone, please say hello to my sweetie wife, Sarah. Hey, hey, Skywalkers! Oh, thank you, everyone, for joining us, our Star Wars and Disney family. We like to start each and every show with a giant Wookiee hug (laughs) to our family of Skywalkers who listen to the show every week, the Scope Walkers and the Face Huggers who watch our live stream every week, and everyone who tweets at us at Skywalking Pod or, of course, posts in our Facebook group and just shares the positivity about our collective adventure through fandom. And I also want to say a big hello to all the scope walkers and skywalkers that we met in person this past weekend. Yeah, we met so many new friends. And if you if this is the first time you are joining us on Skywalking Through Neverland, please let us know on Facebook or on Periscope or just go into our Facebook group, Skywalking Through Neverland. Facebook group? Facebook group, yes, 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 yes. yes. So please let us know. Either uh, hit us up on social media or just comment right here. It's so exciting. All right, now we are back from Orlando, now recording from Long Beach, California, on April the 19th, 2017. Sarah, are you prepared? Nope. All right, I'm going to ask you, what time is it? It's 1.52. Good afternoon. (laughs) 1.52, <laughs> 1.52, which means it's, what, 4.52? Yeah. D- don't, wow. don't even go there. No, no, don't go there. Well, yeah. we woke up at, like, 6.30 today, which technically would be, like, 9.30 over on the East Coast, so we slept in. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but we're not going to sleep through this week, and I know we put out a Rebels press conference episode, and if you heard that, we had mentioned, hey, this is going to be our episode for the week, but... Come on. (laughs) Who are we kidding? (laughs) You know what's fun about that episode is that it was edited in Disney Springs and it was published. No, no. It was recorded in Disney Springs. It was recorded and edited at Disney Springs and then it was published at the airport. Okay, let's go... Oh, yeah. Okay, you're right. See, I'm I'm already two shows ahead. See, I know I'm right. <laughs> yes, you're always right. Always <laughs> right. Yeah. So there we were recording at Disney Springs. We had to huddle around our microphone. And as soon as we started to huddle around our our iPhone, guess who showed up? A squad of secret squirrels. Mm-hmm. As if they knew that we were going to be there. They didn't catch us, but they were right there. So we got that edited and off it went at the airport, like you were saying. You were yep. right. Yep. But then this show was mainly edited during our flight from oh. Orlando to here. Yeah, there you go. So the so the actual the actual debriefing, debriefing segment that we recorded yeah. on Sunday, I was too jazzed. I wanted to put it all together, so I cleaned it up. And when we first left Orlando, I'd started it. We just landed it in Los Angeles, and I just made the last edit. Woohoo! <laughs> That's timing. That's how we have a show for you this week. Another one. Right. Very exciting. 
So on this show, like we just mentioned, we're going to have our debriefing for Star Wars Celebration Orlando. We called all of our friends. Some of them couldn't make it. Some of them had to leave. But those who could make it, we want to thank you very, very much for that. And we gathered all the Skywalkers who who still had a little bit of energy left. <laughs> just a little bit. And said, okay, we just need uh, an hour of your time. Yeah, we heard everyone's adventures and stories and... Oh, my goodness. We got a little corner of the Hyatt Hotel, mm -hmm. and we had a Charlie Brown buffet, an yeah. Easter buffet. Everyone took all their snacks out of their bags and put <laughs> it in the middle of the table, and we all just kind of yum, 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 yum. Like jelly beans and toast. It, re it really was a Charlie Brown <laughs> Easter feast. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, and of course, and that happened to be the area where a lot of people were walking back from the convention. So we saw Andy Gutierrez. Matt we, Martin Matt stopped Martin. by mm -hmm. to give us... Some some questions, some answers to questions we've always wanted to know. Yeah. Hmm. Ray's parent. Who are Ray's parents? <laughs> Does he break down and tell us? Listen and find out. <laughs> and find out who could or could not carry a tune during our show tunes sing-along. Yeah. We didn't, <laughs> that, that's we how didn't, giddy we were. We didn't plan that. It just kind of <laughs> happened. That, that's oh, how Steve, giddy we were. Steve Sansweet says, says Matt Clifton. He he also stopped by. That's right. He didn't stop by, but we saw him as oh, well. Oh yeah, we stopped before we started recording. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so everyone was walking by there. It was neat. So now, before we go into our debriefing, let's for the first time combine things we want to share and our shout outs, since this week they do go hand in hand. If you like Reese's peanut butter cups, you're gonna love this. It's like chocolate and peanut butter all rolled into one. <gasps> but mm. shout outs and things we want to share. Things we want to shout it out. Shout it out. <laughs> Things we want to share. Things we want to share. Shout outs. Things we want Skywalker to share. Skywalker shout outs. Which Skywalkers get props from here in Neverland? Who was tweeted out? Shout out. Who was photoballed? Shout out. Who was shared a post? Shout out. Alright, so we want to thank a number of Skywalkers who helped us out this weekend, including many who volunteered for our podcast stage show, Extravaganza Experience. Yes. It was a huge show. We needed a lot of help, and everyone just came out and really wanted to help out, and mm -hmm. I, we, we really appreciate that because we couldn't have done it without you. So let's start off by thanking Jeremy Hunt for running the soundboard, and he was pretty much the crux of the show because without him, we couldn't have. We had rented a big screen, a big mm -hmm. screen and a projector because we wanted everyone. We knew the room was going to be packed, and we wanted everyone in the back to see what was going on. And let's let's get a projector. Yeah. All right. Let's let's sing some money into this. That's that's fine. Matt Clifton was a huge help. Martin Keeler donated a lot of prizes. Yeah, and we want to give a big thanks to Kylo Ren, who is Ryan Street, and Suara, who are our bouncers. Yeah. We also had Kai Charles, Red Five Mom, and Patty Hammond also donated some prizes. We want to give a big shout out to Scott Hume and Donald Wicks. Oh, Dan Barry, Dan who had a very special job. Yeah, he wasn't there the first part of the show. Where did he go? It's almost like he had a secret identity. So, big thanks to Dan Barry for getting there late. We want to thank Brian <laughs> Sims and Margaret Mays, Sophie Kaplan, Joe Costa Drew's daughter, Amanda Bakken, Michael Talon, Reynold Gobiel. And Matt Bush and Lindsay for donating so many art prints for all those great giveaways. And also, of course, Randy Martinez for joining us on a mini episode of... Classic Marvel, Marvel Star, Star Wars, Wars comics. comics. <laughs> yeah, so thanks to everyone and, and people who donated prizes. I just can't thank you enough. And, yeah. You know, Matt Bush and Lindsay had, we'd gone to their booth and they just said, here, want some prizes? And ka -chunk. I know. Gave us a like a, a roll of posters that weighed more than most Ewoks. Yeah, exactly. And now if you're wondering where you can see this live podcast stage show if you have not seen it if you were not present we are working on uploading that to youtube and we will also have the audio available on our podcast feed someone just chimed in and asked how much does an ewok weigh well if you're looking at low gray he's a little bit thicker than most ewoks wicked is a little bit smaller because he's, he's a child ewok so gonna be more clear you're talking about tebow you're talking about princess nisa who doesn't weigh that all that much because she's animated and then are you talking about this ewok yeah 
Because this Ewok is one and a half pounds. And we want to thank all the Skywalkers who came out to see our, our podcast stage show. So, oh, Martin Keeler just chimed in on, where is that, Periscope? Yes, uh, the pleasure was mine on Facebook Live. You did a great job. One of the highlights of the weekend. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Martin gave a ton of posters and some bottle openers. Yeah, from Cantina. Hashtag Cantina from Star Wars Celebration Europe. Martin, did you say that you had you had the video you had taken of the whole line, right? Oh. <gasps> Yeah, oh, I'll, that's I right. We need to see, see that. that. We didn't get a chance to, to see that line. Yeah. You know, we, we made everyone wait outside because there were so many moving parts and surprises. We didn't want to ruin it for anybody. Yeah, we had this huge line outside. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for everyone for coming and enjoying and hanging out for the extra 30 minutes. They mm-hmm. gave everyone an hour. We took an hour and a half. Yeah. You just can't do what we wanted to do in, in one hour. <laughs> that's true. And we want to thank Derek Beebe for also being there. Oh. Why am I mentioning him? Why? Because whenever we mention Derek Beebe, we always mention his name wrong. Ah. We, we always mentioned him. We always called him Derek Beeb. Okay. So Derek this Beebe? is a way of our, our making it up. We know now. Derek Beebe. Thank and you. Marina Payne, thank you for joining us. Lots of fun, she says. Yeah. It's fun hanging out with you during the week. And also, let's see. Oh, what video did Amanda Bakken oh, get? Yeah, big thanks to Amanda Bakken. Well, you were going to one panel. I, I really wanted to see some of the vintage panels, and I hadn't seen any yet. Right. And we passed by uh, Amanda and Eric on their way to the Rebels pilot panel. Right, now, right. This, it was billed as the Rebels panel, so people going there thought it was for Rebels, the animated show, and even the host... That little cute bouncy number. What's her name? Oh. Amanda, I think. I don't know. Yeah, she had no idea what panel it was, but it was for the Rebels oh, no. pilot uh, panel. Like, like it was a, a reunion, right? Reunion, yeah. Dennis Lawson, who played Wedge, was there. Garrick Hagen, who played Biggs Darklighter, was there. Angus McKinnis, who played Gold Leader, was there. Wow. Yeah, my, uh, Mike Quinn, who played Ninem, was there. Tim Rose, who played Admiral Akbar, was no there. No wonder you wanted so to see I this. I really wanted to see this, and I was so glad I did, and... At the end, they had a Q&A, so immediately my hand shot up, and I made sure the person could see me this time. <laughs> and I asked a, a question, and I, of course, I said, I'm from Skywalking Through Neverland, and and I asked Angus McKinnis a question. First, I wanted to ask Dennis Lawson a question. I really wanted to ask him, ask Dennis. So you had said you didn't want to do The Force Awakens because you would have thought it would have been boring. Please, please explain this, because there's a lot of people in this room who want an answer to that question. Yeah. But as soon as it was Q&A time, he bolted. Aww, he left. He okay. had to go do something else. Okay. If you're listening, my hands are doing the air quotes thing. <laughs> I, I tend to believe he knew what was coming. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So instead, I wanted to ask Angus McKinnis, who played Gold Leader, a question. And you know what? Let's go ahead and roll the clip right now. And sorry about the audio, but we were in a big, empty room well, uh, Not- a, a bear room, so right. the sound was just bouncing everywhere. All right, so thanks to Amanda Bakken for, for getting out her iPhone and recording this. In the center, I have Richard from the Skywalking Through Neverland podcast. Oh, boy. Hi, Richard. Hey, 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 hey guys. This is question is for Mr. McKinnis. McKinnis. What, what was, was it like being killed by Harrison Ford? Ford? <laughs> when? <laughs> oh, and witness. And witness. <laughs> Uh, it's just a run of the mill day, you know. I was uh, just hanging around this barn and uh, he got carried away. What can you say? That it was one of those moments in, I suppose every actor has them. Um, you have these sort of bell ringing moments in your career. And um, when they suggested that we do this scene, I s- blithely said, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And. Um, had not a clue what was going to actually happen until they really just we discussed it and then they put me in this silo and I thought um (laughs) you're going to drop how much corn (laughs) and then and then Peter Weir got in with me and he was all bandaged up he had towels around his face and he had glasses on and I said Peter what are you doing in here and he said, well, if you're going to do this, I'm going to come in here with you. I said, are you out of your mind? Then you've got to get out of here. This is going to be a, sh- excuse my language, but this is going to be a sh- farm. <laughs> like, no question about it. And it was. It was a total nightmare. And I've only had that experience one, uh, one other time when you sort of thought your life was actually 
actually on the line. Because when this corn dropped, I sucked in an enormous amount of dust. I, I hadn't realized that it wouldn't just be nice little pieces of corn. There was always going to be a lot of dust in it. And I suddenly inhaled all this dust. And there's a shot of me trying to get out of the silo. And I was actually desperately trying to get out and desperately trying to get a, a gulp of air. I had absolutely no air. And that's in the final cut. Hmm? That's, 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 that's one take. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, let's do it again. As we all know, Andy. Do it again. Four choking. He, he was in witness with Harrison Ford. Oh. And Harrison Ford dumps a big bale of hay. Yeah. Uh, not hay, corn on him. Okay. Like, what? Huh? <laughs> so that he finally got it. Okay. Yeah. I was at the Freemaker Adventures panel. Meeting our very good new friend, Michael Kramer. Michael Kramer, the composer. Yeah, who we got an awesome interview with. All and, right. and I walked up to Bob Roth after the Freemaker Adventures panel, and I was wearing my Skywalking Through Neverland shirt, and he pointed right at my chest and said, I want to be on your podcast. Okay. I know, that was fun. All right, sure. <laughs> So we had several meetups throughout this weekend, and I think the capper was our Epcot day on Monday after Star Wars Celebration. And we just want to give a big shout out to Sandra Shoot for helping us out on our Epcot day. So yeah. you know what you did, Sandra. So thank you. The fourth Skywalking Through Neverland meetup. <laughs> wow. Four. Was the first one Drowning in Moonlight? Uh, that one wasn't really a, a it wasn't our meetup. meetup. No, no, no. The first one was the podcast stage show. Then we had no Galactic, Galactic Nights. Nights. Then we had the Hooja Pop. The Hooja oh, Pop. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then which we'll go into in just a couple of yeah. seconds in the debriefing. And then Epcot. And then Epcot. Yeah. So, so thanks to everyone that and each one of those. Meetups were just packed. Yeah, we had different people showed up. Some of the same people showed up. It was awesome. We had this whole tribe of Skywalkers, and it, it was so amazing. And my mom has joined us. I think that's Facebook, right? Facebook. Hi, Mom. Yeah, and Mom, we give you a huge shout-out because you had bought us for Easter those prints that we loved. Yeah. Love them. So, so thank you thank so you much. That. Oh, and then a bunch of Skywalkers oh. and podcasters met at Jock Lindsay's on Sunday night as so well. There were offshoot meetups. Yeah. It was so much fun. Like half what the the fun of Star Wars Celebration really at this point is just a family reunion. Yeah. It really is. Hey, Dan Berry just joined. Hey, Dan, where were you the first half of our podcast stage show? You missed Secret Squirrel. Yeah, what the heck? Come on, Dan. <laughs> All right, so who was there at the at the Epcot meetup? Well, the Mandervillians, of course. Mm -hmm. Boy, Luann's a trip. <laughs> she, she wasn't even drunk. <laughs> Matt Clifton, Brian Sims, Amanda and Jeff Bakken were there, Patty and Michael Hammond. I'm so glad that Michael was there, Patty's husband. We've never really talked before, uh, except for saying hello and goodbye, but what an interesting guy. Yeah. And also, we had Walter Manbeck. He joined us. And Trisha Barr and Teresa Delgado made it a bit of a fangirls reunion for a while. Of course, Greg Lutha, Teresa's husband, was there as well. We had BJ Priester, Ryan Stamfley, The Chica Fence, Missy Kaya, and Michael Emke joined us. He was actually working that yeah, day. Yeah, he works at, Diz, at, at Epcot. Yeah. So he took off his name badge and came over and joined us and put it back on. He's like, he's like Superman. Uh-huh. You know, instead of the glasses, he's got uh, his name badge. <laughs> and also, I know Dan and Lindsay Berry and he the Hunt family were shut out of of Epcot because of blackout dates because of uh, Easter. But Easter weekend was kind of hard for, for a, yeah. a convention. Hey, you know what? Tangent. Time for a yes. tangential okay. moment. Hey, I don't know how we can do this, but I, I really want to have everyone write in and say, no more Easter weekends. Mm. Is there anyone here who loved having an on Easter weekend? How about from the Scope Walkers and the Face Hugger? Did that sit well for anyone? Because mm. I want to all... all uh, Email? Email. And I'm, at some point, they will be sending out the comments and surveys. Oh, comments and surveys. Let's put it, surveys. no more Easter weekends. Because I know, I don't think we'll be able to make it another Easter. No. You know, I know a lot of other people also said the same thing, that... It just destroyed a lot of family moments. Right. So let's write in. No, can we hashtag that? Uh, hashtag pick any other weekend. <laughs> but Easter. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible time. Yeah. I mean, we all had fun, 
but but yeah, it was hard. And like you said, like a lot of uh, skywalkers were blocked out of the parks. And... Well, a lot of them had have families that yeah. they want to be with on Easter, and mm-hmm. it was it was really really hard. And we our job depends on holidays. Yeah. Hey, Christopher Marino just joined us. <laughs> Dan Barry, Christmas weekend? No, bad. <laughs> Uh, maybe not that weekend either. No. <laughs> All right. And then later on at Epcot, when we left, we had met Joshua Jordan, too, mm-hmm. who worked at, well, what is it called? He Disney at, Quest? Yeah, Disney Quest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the big arcade place what, that they're going to tear down. They're going to take it away with Disney Quest. No more Frogger. No more Space Invaders. No more Asteroids. No more Missile Command. No more of those elevator escape games. No more Mario games. And you know what it's going to be? The NBA experience. Um, what's, an, what's an NBA? It's an NBA. It's base, basketball. So you don't you don't even know. <laughs> all right. So unfortunately, that's that's all that's all going. Whitney says hi. Hi, Whitney. So for those, that, you know, what? Oh, hold on. Martin Keeler says they do it at Halloween. Oh, Halloween. Yeah, it's gonna be sports, Ray. Yeah. Do it at Halloween. Huh. Yay, basketball. That's right. You do like basketball. <laughs> well, you'll have All to right. go and let us know how it is. Yeah. But Justin Smith doesn't agree with you. All right. For anyone who <laughs> wasn't at our Epcot day, we all started. Let's give a let's give a little brief debriefing yeah. of the Epcot day. Let's spend a couple of minutes doing this because it was a lot of fun. It was. So we rode the Gran Fiesta Tour, which is the Mexican boat ride in the Mexico Pavilion. And that's what we started with. We weren't planning on it, but all the Skywalkers we had gotten together were like, let's go on a ride. Woohoo. So we started that ride to start. It was super fun. There was, I think, 22 Skywalkers there. It was amazing. Yeah. I think we almost sank the boot. Yeah. (laughs) And then we ate and drank our way around the world for three hours. This hour-long meetup turned into this nice three-hour just relaxing. It's like Gilligan's Island. A three-hour tour turned into... (laughs) A big, giant, all-day meetup. It was super fun and just relaxing. Like, that was the thing to do after a crazy convention. And we capped it off with a ride on Journey into Imagination with Figment as a little capper. I still have no idea what that ride's all about. (laughs) I know. (laughs) On the meetup. And, you know, I mean, we even almost closed out the park with, with some Skywalkers. So it was really cool. We had a great time. Yeah. Hey, if anyone's going to Epcot for their first time or just any time, you want to go to that soda pavilion and you want to try the Beverly soda, okay? Try the Beverly. You'll, you're going to love it. That's the one you want. <laughs> yeah. Have have a lot of that. <laughs> okay, you're going to love, love. <laughs> Mrs. Reb W just said on Facebook, boo. I know. Boo to the Beverly soda. Stuff is so good. Who was it? I think Teresa Delgado and... Who and else Matt. took a shot? Matt. Yeah, they had, Matt they, Clifton. They had to slam it. They took a shot All right. of the Beverly. Now, truth be told, never go near any beverage named Beverly. <laughs> it's the most dis- disgusting thing ever you will put in your mouth. Now, I'm not even sure what kind of taste this could equate with. I didn't taste it, so because yeah. I'm smart. It's like if you leave medicine out for like a year mm. and you add some ammonia into that. Ew. And you then... Spread it on the floor and then scrape it up. That would be better than the Beverly soda. <laughs> Someone said, what's that? Who is, cardboard who is that? taste says finding rest. I wish. Ryan. I wish it tasted like cardboard. Now, do you recall the gum that came with the top Star Wars cards? That is like tiramisu compared to the Beverly soda. Ew. <laughs> All right. Just want to make sure that no one here tries the Beverly soda. <laughs> All right, now, where are we? Where are we? We're still in Things We Want to Share slash Skywalker Shoutouts because we're giving you guys all shoutouts. Yeah, so once again, thanks everyone who joined us for the Epcot Day and and a giant Wookiee hug (coughs) to Sandra for helping us out that day. Yes. All right, now, before we go into our debriefing, we have a request for all the Skywalkers. We are prepping for our big Star Wars 40th anniversary shows. Not yeah. just one, but Ooh. like a whole month full of anniversary In May. celebrations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we want to hear some Skywalker stories. We want to get you guys involved. As it pertains to Star Wars. Okay. So did you see Star Wars back in 1977 in its first run? What did you do at, with Star Wars as a focal point in 77? So it doesn't really need to be just about the movie. Did you play with the toys? Like, basically, because you saw Star Wars, what was, like, the main thing 
that drew you in after you saw it? Like, was it, you know, a day out playing toys and all of a sudden you met your best friend? Or... A personal story. A personal always story. Fun. Yeah. yeah one, one specific story, not just, hey, I saw Star Wars and then I bought the toys and I did this. Let's get a, a specific story about how Star Wars really changed your life. Right. That would be great. And once again, it doesn't need to be just about the movie, but it can be about... Uh, something having to do with the toys or the merchandise. Maybe you went to the mall to see Darth Vader, which was – that would be a story I may tell, going to the mall to yeah. see Darth Vader. So, so huge. But, you know, a lot of these Skywalkers, Sarah, including yourself, mm-hmm. well, they weren't around in 1977. That's true. So if you did not – you if you weren't around back in 77, but you still have a story to share how – you, Star Wars affected you in some personal way. We really want to hear about that story. So that that's what we want to hear. Like, does it have to do with your career path? Does it have to do with making friends? Or does it have to do with maybe the music? Or maybe uh, what you chose to do in school because of Star Wars? So we just want these very personal stories. Yeah. One John Jedi just put up on... I can't tell which one is which anymore. Yeah. Periscope. Periscope. They saw Star Wars in 77 and it scared them. Oh. Okay. Tell us that story right there. How did tell it, us why. How did it scare you and did it affect you at all later on? That would be great. So we'll sprinkle these stories um, along with some other stuff that we're working on throughout our big celebration episodes. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a whole different kind of celebration this time. <laughs> all right. So now what should they do to send in their MP3s? Oh. So make sure that you email that, share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. And that is the best way to do that. Thank you and thank you. Mm. And when you do send in your recording, make sure you give us your name and a little bit of a, hey, this is my story about, give us a headline. Oh, hi, my name is. My name is so-and-so. And I saw Darth Vader at the Bradley's Mall in Watertown, Massachusetts. And then maybe go into a lot of the story here, just so we have some context. Okay. Sound good? It does sound good. All right, I like being thorough. All right, with that, let's move on to the debriefing, where we dissected the Last Jedi trailer, the Star Wars Rebels Season 4 trailer, the tear-jerking Star Wars 40th Anniversary panel, and our various podcast stage shows. So, you know, we had people who had two chance encounters with Dave Filoni, who got to have a personal conversation with Timothy Zahn, how many Skywalkers graced the pre-show stage at Star Wars Celebration, and who went around kissing everyone at the 501st Bash. Hmm. We're going to learn all these stories and many, many more in this debriefing. These are the stories of our collective adventures through fandom. Now joining us were the Skywalkers Trisha Barr, Matt Clifton, Ryan Stamfley, Sandra Shute. Luann and David Mandervillian. I'm sorry, I just can't say Manderville anymore. It's, you're now the Mandervillians. Melissa Villy, is that Villy? Mm-hmm. Melissa Villy, John Liang, Patty Hammond, BJ Priester was there, and Matt Martin, whether he knew it or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everyone sit back and enjoy the ride. Welcome to Star Wars Celebration in Orlando. I'm so excited. It's going to be amazing. I've been waiting for Celebration all year long. I'm just a ball of excited, nervous energy. This year marks the 40th anniversary of Star Wars. 40 years. Does that always happen when you walk into a room? Not like this. I'm always stunned at the passion that has lasted all these years. We've got George Lucas here, C-3PO, Lando Parisian, Chewbacca, and Luke Skywalker. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Harrison Ford. It doesn't get much more epic than this. <laughs> this is going in so the outtakes. Celebration. Orlando has just ended, and we are really, really punchy. We're now singing Grease tunes. Yes. We're all not right. sure what convention we were at. Not at all. That's why I had a pause. So, did we survive Celebration Orlando? 
All right, it is Easter Sunday. We have a full buffet of sugar right in front of us. Yes. All right, so let's talk about Star Wars Celebration Orlando. Who was here all four days? Yeah. Yeah. Here, everyone raise their hand. And you know what we have? How many people? One, two, three, four, five. Twelve of us. Twelve of us. Twelve, Twelve of us all telling you Skywalkers who may have not been here about our great times. And that way it's like you are here with us. Oh, yeah. We're bringing you guys with us. Exactly. So, you know, let's go around and ask everyone what their favorite moments were. Mm. Favorite moments. All right. Trisha Barr? Do I really have to go first? Yes, you do. All right. You know what? I'll go first. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, that the 40th anniversary panel. That was... Who talks first? Who talks first? You talk first? I talk first? I can't understand you with your glasses on. Who talks first? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the 40th anniversary panel. All right, we have all these stars of Star Wars coming out on stage with, with Mr. Harrison Ford. <gasps> Yay. Never thought that would happen at a celebration, but he's been coming around. He's been less grumpy pants these last couple of years. Absolutely. So that was fantastic. Plus, we get George Lucas and Mark Hamill and Billy D. Williams. We had Warwick Davis and Peter Mayhew. And that was just fantastic. And, okay, then, and Billy Lord. Yeah. Billy Lord, Carrie Fisher's daughter. Oh, Billy Lord was a surprise. We really didn't expect that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, because she's been kind of staying away from all of this uh, but her mom, if it's, if it's not pre-recorded, I, who, who can blame her, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and she had, uh, behind us was her, was her teleprompter, and luckily it was there because she was just about to break down. I don't know mm. how she got through all of that. Yeah, that was, that was heartfelt, and the fact that she was going through all of her mom's favorite Star Wars quotes. General Kenobi, years ago you served my father in the Clone Wars. Now he begged you to help him in his struggle against the Empire. I regret that I am unable to present my father's request to you in person, but my ship has fallen under attack, and I'm afraid my mission to bring you to Alderaan has failed. I have placed information vital to the survival of the rebellion into the memory systems of this R2 unit. My father will know how to retrieve it. You must see this droid safely delivered to him on Alderaan. This is our most desperate hour. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Yeah, yeah. So who, who here did not shed a tear during that? No one's raising their hand. I didn't get to see it. Right. Now, don't forget, when you're about to speak, just say your name so we know who you are. I'm David of the Mandervillians. <laughs> I shed no tears because I was spending two and a half hours in the Hallmark line at the time. You got your cantina itty bitties. I got my Hallmark ornament. That's oh. what I wanted. Oh, the Ralph oh. McQuarrie Stormtrooper. Yes. All right. Okay, so you're excused and you're excused. <laughs> but if you were there, you would have been shedding tons of tears. Well, I would have been more excited to see Harrison Ford because I'm a huge Harrison Ford and Han Solo fan, so I'm more upset that I didn't see that. Uh, and when he came out, he wore a giant smile on his face. Awesome. All that right, was. Sarah? My favorite moment? Your favorite moment. My favorite moment of the whole convention would have been, honestly, uh, Timothy Zahn. Oh, oh. Moment with that. Okay. Because for me, I didn't actually realize how much Timothy Zahn has affected my fandom until Thrawn was announced for Star Wars Rebels in the third season, and I found myself like crying at that, you know, at the Europe Celebration Europe announcement. And so, uh, knowing that and just realizing how much that affected me, his books, um, I actually had about. We had, what, 15 minutes to chat with him? Yeah, 15, um, 20 minutes. At the Drowning in Moonlight Gala. So that was amazing. And we talked all about how Thrawn is in Rebels, and he totally lied to our faces. <laughs> when we asked, is there any more characters that are going to be showing up in Star Wars Rebels? And he's like, oh, no. You know what? I did play that back in my mind, thinking, wait a minute, did he just lie to us, too? But we did ask him, is... Mara Jade going to be in and Joris whose last name I can't Joris pronounce Sabaoth. so he never really Sabaoth. said no more characters so he didn't he didn't really lie he lied whatever that, this is Patty it's from a certain point of view uh, this is Melissa and I was just about to say that too <laughs> <laughs> nice alright who else wants to tell us their favorite, favorite moment from Star Wars Celebration Orlando Matt? Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, this is Matt Clifton. And uh, probably one of my favorite moments was coming out of the Last Jedi panel. Mm -hmm. And uh, say what you will about the trailer, if you lo liked it or didn't like it so much. But when Ryan and I came out, there was a Ray cosplayer who was being comforted by her friend. And just the level of joy 
and emotion on her face was just just told me everything it was just that when something can affect you like that that's what it's all about right there my favorite moment this is trisha barr is the fangirls going road podcast stage <laughs> and you have an insufferable ego i do have an insufferable <laughs> ego but it was because we got to be with friends and we got to do what we wanted to do and have a good time and talk about star wars with people which we don't you know we talk in our with their earphones on usually we don't get to share and so for me that was one of the highlights it was really cool to see all those people we had a very very packed room there and uh lots of fun i guess mary franklin actually uh crashed our panel and took pictures oh yeah how fun. Oh. yeah so that's Yay. cool yeah i'm ryan stamfley and i uh, yeah this is tough uh being with everybody but probably if you want to pick moments it's just when you're walking along a line and all of a sudden someone calls out your name that you maybe haven't met in person or you have just haven't seen them in two years or something like that and they recognize you and they call you out. And, yeah, making those connections, not being the little tiny postage stamp-sized picture on a screen. You're actually, yeah, you know, getting to see each other life-size in person. And you get the hugs. It's really cool. This is Patty Hammond, and I agree. I, I cannot believe how many people recognized me going through the hallway and yelling at me. And I'm like, huh, what? <laughs> Are you talking to me? <laughs> okay, this is Luann Mandervillian. And <laughs> I don't know. There's so many wonderful highlights. but So lo- separate a favorite moment from a personal moment. We'll do personal moments in just a bit. Okay, personal, oh. but a favorite moment. Favorite. Oops. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. Mm-hmm. Okay. Having him come out, uh, you know, after all these years, and there's been... You know, so many ugly rumors that go out there, and who knows what's true, but I really felt that he really said thank you to us. It yeah, was, yeah. And there was still love in yes. that room between him and George. It was wonderful to see that, and we all just sucked right into that, and I love that, and he's still, oh, my goodness, hot. So anyway, <laughs> anyway. High five, so, Okay, I'm sorry, that's a little personal, but anyway. Anyway. That- <laughs> David sitting are, right in I front know, of you. I know, I know. I'm divorced now. Okay, bye. <laughs> good to know. He's you know what? Ha- Harrison Ford is, is, all, is, all, is on the list. It's fine. Yeah, I told my mom, yeah. so, you know, she's right there with me, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this has been so awesome, so thank you. Suddenly we're all talking about hall passes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is John Liang. Probably my favorite moment was um, doing a panel with Jason Fry, who wrote the Servants of the Empire books, and uh, the Star Wars uh, Guide to Warfare and Thomas Harper, who is a, who's a contributor to 1138. We did a panel on the military and Star Wars on Friday morning at 1030. So we knew we were going to miss the, the, the Last Jedi panel. I and mean, we were wondering, is anyone, I was wondering personally, is anyone going to show up? And that room, that fan room filled out. So nice. just seeing everybody, the people still were interested and came out and people came out afterwards and talked to us and said, it was great. We want more panels like this or fan based panels, kind of like what you do in like say Dragon Con and other conventions. And they really liked it a lot. So yeah, that's awesome. Nice. How about this side of the room right over here? Or, oh, well, David, you didn't go yet. Not yet. But, okay. So this is David Mandervillian again, I guess in, in general that my, one of my favorite moments was spending an hour with Sarah and Richard at the Skywalking panel, such a, a, a fun group that comes to your to your podcast. Um, we really do have a family of Skywalkers, and they showed that love in the room that night. And uh, this is definitely a, a, a good group to be with. We're never ever going to separate. And so wherever this next celebration ends up, we're going to be there. We're going to be doing this again. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Aww. This is Sandra Shute. My favorite moment was being able to attend Smooth Talking with Billy D. Williams. Um, he's a favorite of mine, and just hearing his voice and just the passion coming from his voice um, really touched me. And and I really wanted to sit in on his panel because I I see him as 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 a person who sort of opened the door for so many you know people of color. Um, on the screen so I really wanted to just have that moment to just to kind of sit back and listen to him and I was getting ready to ask a question Mark Daniels did point to me but then Warwick Davis said 
last question. So I didn't get to ask him my question, but that's okay. But it was just a wonderful moment. I'm glad I got to got to see him and, and just listen to him and listen to his story. So it was it was just wonderful to be there. That was my my personal moment, my favorite moment. This is a BJ Priester. My favorite moment was I think the Rebels panel. Mm. It was great. The cast did a great job. Dave Filoni did a great job. And toward the end, when he got up to say, this is going to be the last season, and you could tell how important it was to him to be able to tell the fans in person about it. So. Now. Well. Ooh, this will be interesting. So I've never done this before, ever. Um, this is a different kind of announcement. Uh, and I think you understand where I'm coming from. But seeing the evolution here of this family and these kids, and I watch them get older. And as a creator of a story, I think about these things. I think about where are we going? What do the characters need to go through? So this is where I have to tell you, it's my decision as the creator of this show with Simon, that season four is the final season of Star Wars Rebels. I know. I know. But I firmly believe that each generation needs to have their own piece of Star Wars. You know, and I feel that this show, for a lot of kids growing up with it, is very much, as much a part of Star Wars as any of the movies. And I really appreciate that love from you guys. And to talk about getting to end the show in his terms, in his way, unlike Clone Wars, and, and that, that they were ending it for story reasons, not for budget reasons or executive reasons or anything, that this was the story we had to tell with these characters. And there's going to be more animation in the future with new characters and new stories. But this is, we've arced out, this is what we want to do. And, and, and then celebrate it with an episode for the people in the room. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just tell that the, he, he talks a lot in a lot of appearances about the fans. But this was his, his hour and a half time slot to really celebrate the fans of his baby in Star mm-hmm. Wars. And, you know, and especially because with Clone Wars, it was really George's show. As much as we talk about Dave, it was really George's show. And this is his show. Yeah. Rebels is his, his first true Dave Filoni led contribution to Star Wars, so it was it was great to see him get to be with the fans. You know, I really felt that way that too on on stage. Like he seemed like the patriarch father, you know, and he had the two little kids and Tia Sirkar and and Ezra, not Ezra, Ezra. Taylor Ezra. Gray. Ezra. Thank you. Yeah, it was just it was just very family family oriented. Um, this is Mosa. I didn't see the panel, but I did see the trailer, and oh my god, that trailer! So I have to say that is my favorite moment is the trailer and oh my god what, the part where Hera narrates in the beginning I started freaking out because I'm like oh my god I don't want any of these characters to die I hate it when people kill off characters and that made me so nervous and of course the moment between Hera and Kanan because it's space married I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> even Dave said that yep <laughs> do you think a character will be lost this season of Rebels <sighs> It's hard to say. Hera is the only one we know confirmed to survive and, and Chopper, Chopper because yeah. they're in Rogue One. Well, mm-hmm. Hera's not technically in a Rogue, she, Rogue One. She's mentioned. So it's anything could happen to any of the other characters. Any of them could possibly die or sacrifice themselves to save another character. Um, so, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's what makes me nervous is you never, you never yeah. know. I'm going to go on record by saying Sabine's not going to make it. I thought she wasn't going to make it this season, yeah, honestly. Just because when Tia Sirkar started breaking down and crying, yeah, yeah. and I know it's very sad because it, the, this is over and the whole family of Rebels will be over for the time being. Like, we're talking to Tracy Canobio, and she was saying, well, Tia was crying because it's the last time they'll ever do a Star Wars Rebels panel together, mm-hmm. that, which is true, and it's going to be the end of Rebels, which she can see has just had so much love. And everyone has gotten so much love. And to see her character being cosplayed out on the floor, yeah. that's going to be so emotional. I, I think there was a tear shed for another reason. Hmm. Because she just might not make it. I, I see. Uh, yeah, did you? Pardon me. This is Luann again, and I see it that way, too. I see that she's going to be not pushed, but needed to be in such a, um, a high status of pushing the fight that... That will be the ultimate. I, I, 
it's it's almost like you see it. Maybe not. Maybe maybe they want us to just go there. Who knows? We'll see. And her death will bring the peace of Mandalore. I don't know. It's Mandalore. Uh- <laughs> yeah, the jury's out on Mandalore. Yeah, those Mandalorians. Just get along, why don't you? We just know we're going to see more Mandalore in this season. Yeah. I know we were kind of dovetailing into personal moments, but is there any other personal moments we haven't touched on yet? Yeah, my personal moment. This is Patty. I got tapped by Mark Daniels during one of the panels. (laughs) The Rebels panel. I was was visiting with Eliza and Missy, Mm -hmm. Kai, Mm -hmm. and I was giving them, you know, some stuff that, I had for them because I just happened to spot them in the front. I was trying to sneak by as Mark Daniels was uh, starting his uh, thing, you know, the free show. Yep. And he goes, hi. And I'm like kind of waving, kind of trying to get, he's like, no, you're not going anywhere. He says, I said hi to you. You come here. You you were making the rounds, weren't you? You were were on everyone's stage. Yeah. Whoa, Patty. So, um. He asked me a question and answer session for, you know, who my favorite character is in Rebels. And we talked about Chopper and K2SO and our hope to see them together in season four. Uh-huh. And then uh, he gave me a prize. I now have, have a proud odor of a uh, little Hot Wheels Y-Wing. Aww. <laughs> a little die cast Mark Daniel in the front. Yeah. In the cockpit. <laughs> Uh, David here with a personal moment that not a lot of you got to witness, but some of you did. Personal favorite moment was following my wife around during the 501st bash <laughs> as she was dressed as size noodles. <laughs> that was so amazing. And everybody and their brother was stopping her and asking for photographs. That and? Just in. And? Photos and? and kisses. And kisses. Big lips <laughs> at the end of that snoot. So... <laughs> That was that was fun to watch and to be a part of and to to our friend Cindy who may or may not listen to podcasts uh, who actually created that great outfit. Thank you to Cindy, and we had such a good time and I enjoyed watching that happen. I have never seen a size noodles I cosplayer before. Never and seen photos awesome. of one anywhere. That was the perfect place to debut it too at a, <laughs> yeah. at a late night party <laughs> because they were all drunk, filled with a lot of very inebriated Bible First members. Secret squirrels outside. Uh, hold on, we're Wait. we're spotting secret squirrel squirrels outside. Secret squirrel. Luckily, we're we're oh. inside. <laughs> <laughs> if they want to come in and stop us, go ahead. You know what? Oh, okay. Hey, we're at the Hyatt, not Disney. <laughs> Sarah, what was your personal moment? Well, uh, so I guess I did mention a personal moment with Timothy Zahn. Well, John oh. John Williams is a favorite moment, but another personal moment would have to be in the Star Wars Rebels press conference when I grabbed that mic and was able to ask a question <laughs> of Dave Filoni. Hi, I'm Sarah Woloski from Skywalking Through Neverland and Yay. Fangirls Going Rogue. Yay. And I have a question. I know our listeners love to hear about the Force, like the Mortis Dark and Clone Wars and stuff. And so my question is, are we going to explore the Force in that way and mythology a little bit more in Season 4? And especially regarding that white, white wolf we saw in the trailer, as well as the fate of Ahsoka. There's a wolf in the trailer? There were a bunch Where was the wolf? <laughs> such, a, such a direct a dagger to question. <laughs> yes, I know now. I see all the spots. See, I, I know all of you better now over the years. Uh, you're all a very perceptive group, and I enjoy this very much. Um, <laughs> you make it, the dance very difficult for me um, because I so desperately want to answer your questions as a fan, fan to fan, and I appreciate it. Um, the Force is the core of Star Wars, and you have to be careful when you answer too many questions about it. I made him dance. <laughs> You're very good at that. Now, my personal moment that David Mandervillian already stole was the podcast stage show Skywalking Through 40 Years of Fandom. Yay. That was just phenomenal, just seeing everyone there. Martin Keeler had taken video of the line, which I'm still, I still can't wait to see. Oh, yeah. and the fact that everyone came out in droves and participated and just showed, and, it, and they said how much they loved the show, and this is not my insufferable ego talking, but it made them happy. It, it pr- inspired them to do a podcast or something else themselves. Right. Just to come on over and say hello and how much they enjoyed the show. Even though the show went 90 minutes, yeah. 30 minutes longer than it was supposed Great. to, everyone stayed and had a, a really good time. Yeah. 
wasn't even like doing a show. It was like talking to all of our f- friends and family. Yeah, or just, just family. And I want to thank all the Skywalkers who came up to us and said, hey, I'm this person, I'm, I'm so-and-so, and I'm so-and-so. Just because last time in 2015, a lot of people had said, oh, I was kind of nervous to come on over, and you guys looked busy, and I'm so glad they weren't this time. And yeah. they really made an effort to come on over and, and say hello. And thank you to all the Skywalkers who did that. And when you do that, you get buttons. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully they did it just to come over and say hello, not well, just, to get, just, uh, just to get a button. Yes. But, but you know what? Extra incentive. Yeah. Double their pleasure. Yeah. Anyone else with a personal moment? Yeah, this is John. The, right after the the podcast we did, I'm sorry, podcast, the, the, the um, panel that we did on uh, military and Star Wars. After we were out of the actual room, we were just we were just hanging out with uh, Jason Fry for a bit, and Thomas gave Jason shot Thomas, who is an active duty Jag Army Jag officer, Jag, Jag Advocate General. He's an Army lawyer. He had spent time in in Afghanistan basically advising the U.S. military about rules of warfare and that kind of thing. And he gave Jason a patch that's only the only people who were deployed to Afghanistan were allowed to, to hold in appreciation for him coming on onto the panel. So it was, he was gobsmacked. He was, he was speechless. He, he, he had nothing to say. He was so really, really appreciative of that. So Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I love hearing all these personal moments because it's like the, the convention is, contains so much. You can't be everywhere at once. And the, I just love it. Anybody else? Have we gone this is Luann again. I just wanted to say, besides all of us being involved in this, all the other people that know about Star Wars, and they know a little bit of background and not, aren't necessarily uber fans like we are, want to know what was it like. What was it like, Luann? How did they love your costume? How did it go? Did you have a great time? What happened? They want to know. And so it reaches beyond way beyond and so it, it really talks about how um how big of an impact it makes on everyone so yeah star wars in general you got it yeah you got it and this is bj i'll, I'll share my personal moment too i actually missed the fangirls going rogue podcast stage because i went to the heroines of star wars panel that was at the same time or conflicting times to make sure we could report it for fangirls going rogue and fangirl blog and it was pretty amazing to sit there. It was mostly Dave Filoni talking, and then they had Daisy Ridley and Tia Sarkar and Ashley Eckstein come out too. But, uh, but for Dave Filoni's part, it was, it was, it was probably a 10-minute segment where he was saying a lot of the talking points that, that Trisha and I and the blog have been talking about for seven years and the need for diversity and inclusion and more female characters and more female creators and executives and writers and directors in Star Wars. And to hear Dave on a panel at Celebration, basically saying the same sort of things that could have been one of Trisha's blog posts or one of her rants on the podcast <laughs> is, uh, I should say rants, <laughs> commentaries on the podcast, uh, was, it was really meaningful because it, it, that the message is getting heard at the highest levels of Lucasfilm, and that's really important. Nice, very nice. This is Melissa again, and since someone already mentioned meeting people they know only online. I'm going to say, um, when I went to the Hasbro booth, I saw the new Star Wars dolls Uh, that they have. The Forces of Destiny dolls? Yes. Yes. They had the Rey and the Sabine and the Leia. and adorable. Eight-year-old me just was like fangirl failing all over the place because I would have loved those circa about 25 years ago. I would have... We loved them circa 25 minutes ago. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I, I don't care that I'm in my 30s. I might, I, I might have to have one of those. Absolutely. You know, one. they're just one. awesome. They're, they're all very yeah, collectible one. and cute. The Chewbacca looks like he's been blow-drying his hair for the last hour. <laughs> awesome. I, I think it's so great to see those toys now for young girls because we didn't have a lot of that in the 90s. And just getting your hands on an action figure back then was very hard, especially the female ones. As rare as the female ones are to see now, the female characters are even harder to find 20 years ago. So to see that girls now can have that and the purple lightsaber they had and Ray's staff and all that, I think that that's awesome. Nice. All right. Now let's talk about the last Jedi trailer.
Jesus. The balance. Absolutely spectacular to see the cast and um, Ryan Johnson and uh, seeing, seeing stills from it and all that was still very exciting and ha- helped amp up uh, the excitement for it. And, you know, getting, getting a, a free poster uh, <laughs> kind, of, kind of sweetens the deal, too. But, you know, um, uh, I guess the trailer didn't have the same impact that it did in Anaheim, but you know that's a given; it's, it's to be expected. But it was still extremely impactful to to us, uh, just being able to be there, be there together, and and see it together. It, there was there was still that energy, maybe right. not not in, not as intense, but the, it was still there. Yeah, it's hard to compare it with The Force Awakens because it's the first film we've had in. 10 years, we have Harrison Ford back. That first image of the downed Star Destroyer just touched everyone's nostalgic nerve, whereas this one had a totally different job to do, and that's, that's to progress the, the new Skywalker saga. Now, when I, when I first saw this, uh, I was waiting for that We Were Home moment or that nostalgic moment. I never got it, so I was, eh, I was a little saddened. But then we, they showed it again, like, okay, now I, can, now I know what we're watching. Um, I know I'm, my expectations aren't in 2015 with The Force Awakens, so now I can judge it more fairly. Right. I have some information. This is David again. I have information about that trailer that I don't know if – were any of you in the Disney Parks panel? No, no. unfortunately. Okay. They told us, of course, that coming up with uh, Star Tours in very soon, we're going to be going to a planet from the new movie. And the Imagineers revealed the name of this planet to us. Oh. So this is a spoiler to many, but it's not a spoiler because they told us what it is. That that planet where you see those ships speeding and blowing up the red dust. Right. Yeah. If you, uh, if you look at a still way in the distance, you can see Imperial Walkers. Right. Yeah, I saw that. This planet is called Crate. Great. So there's your first planet name, and that's where we'll be going on Star Tours. Oh, first nice. Planet. Did oh. they say what kind of environment it was? The, it, a mineral world of some sort. A mineral, a mineral world. world. That's, that's new. Wow, <laughs> so, and I want to know what that red dust is. Like the red... They didn't explain, he didn't explain that, but he said a mineral world you know called what? Crate. I can answer that. I can answer it, or we can have Matt Martin answer it right over there. Hey, Matt, Matt Martin, that? I'm talking what's about the, the planet the of Crate. Dust? What's that red dust? What's, what's on Crate that's making that red dust? You should look it up on the interwebs. <laughs> Rather than getting me fired. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, well, you know what? We don't want to get you fired, even though Matt Martin did tell me Ray's parents. He told me who they were. I don't know who they were. more secrets if you keep blabbing about it. <laughs> but you know what? I think we. Steve and Judy. Steve and Judy! Now everybody knows. I know. Uh-oh. We're going to get you fired. You heard it here first. I mean, we, we heard it from Pablo Hidalgo. That's yes. who it was. I, I get you and Pablo mixed up all the time. Yeah, it's my, Pablo, my, my no. Pablo impersonation is just dead on. <laughs> <laughs> Pablo number two. <laughs> nice. All right, we're going to keep walking because this box yeah, is it's safer. Yeah, it's safer. <laughs> all right. Good you guys. Bye. Bye. Steve and Judy. Awesome. Yeah. I, I never saw that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, my God. And we're tweeting about it right now. Thanks, Ryan. All right. So the, the Last Jedi trailer opens, and we see Ray's hand smack dab on that stone. What do you think happened right before that? Vision. Trip. That's a vision. That's a vision or a force back of something. Yeah. It's definitely she's moving through some type of Suddenly, image. She just yeah. collapses. Bam. What well, was we've that? We've seen her do that before. Why would it be any different? I, you know, but who knows? It looked like mm. a cave right behind her. Well, she's on Octu. So a place is oh. full of caves and little is, and caverns. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, because it did. At, at first, I thought she was like running, and then you know, like had splat down. But but it didn't look like she could run because behind her was like a big wall. So mm-hmm. so yeah, I yeah, it must have been and, vision. And then the crowd went nuts when they had that long shot of her practicing with the lightsaber with Luke right above her. And someone said something about a statue on the other side of her. What? Huh? Yeah, there was a statue right there, right at the edge of the cliff that went down. I, at first, I thought it was Luke looking over, but no, it's a statue, and Luke was on the other side. She was in between the statue and Luke. Yeah, I and just, the statue was right on that cliff going down. I just thought it was a, just a big rock face. It could have been. You're right. It could have been. Okay. Yeah. But if we finally get to hear Luke speak, yep. that, was, that was something. And Luke say, the Jedi must end. Yeah, oh, that was... What was up with that? When I heard it, and this is John again, when I heard it, I was... I didn't get to get to see it on the main stage. We were watching it via my uh, my iPhone, and we, I had a just a, a earphone, earbud in my ear, yeah. and I thought, didn't realize it was Luke. It sounded to me more like Kylo. Okay. So I thought, ooh, Kylo's calling for the Jedi to end. So it wasn't until much later that night when I was back in my Airbnb and really watching it more than once that I realized, oh, that is Luke, okay. Yeah. Right, but the visual was Luke in that cave, in, in the cave... Right. Mouth, right? With yeah. his looking this very, looking very somber. Yeah, like it's time for the Jedi to end. I, that's why I thought it was Kylo, you know, making sure that he was going to end Luke. Okay, so. mm-hmm. yeah. but you know what? There are whispers in that trailer yeah. that yeah. I never heard the first couple times in that yeah. room because it was overblown in there. Um, so, does anybody know what the whispers are? I actually do. This is Trisha. Uh, thanks to Kay and Toby who listened to it very. Uh, you had to really turn it up. Uh, when she says uh, she sees the light, and then there's the voice, uh, help me, Obi-Wan. That's Leia's voice whispering mm-hmm. behind, underneath. And then when she says she sees the dark, you hear Obi-Wan say, Vader was seduced by the dark side. Light. Darkness. Balance. Yeah, and that's clearly Kylo Ren's mask that smashed. So there's right. been a lot of confusion, but you can definitely see the the silver streak. Yes, right. yeah, the that's silver, Kylo oh, the Ren. Piping. And pl- but then we hear Vader's breathing behind that shot. That's that's tying it all it's together. What did, what did Melissa- it definitely looks like a twisted mask, and uh, it's Kylo's would be the. Um, my guess, because he's the masked character, right. or villain, I should say, in this trilogy. Now, didn't Kylo's mask get destroyed with Starkiller base? Or unless he picked it up when he left. He has Vader's destroyed mask yeah. somehow, so... <laughs> so... He's got a collection. Wow. Yeah, so it, it, there's no reason why he didn't just pick it up when he, when he left. Okay, gotcha. Well, he, he does have the, the Claymore lightsaber back. So he's he's obviously repaired his lightsaber since the fight at Star Killer Base. So he probably has extra lightsabers and extra masks and extra capes and extra boots and everything on hand, you know, in his in his other fortresses. So <laughs> <laughs> And also it's interesting, it's hard to tell from the shot in the trailer, but it, it looks like maybe there's a glass shattered yeah. that along with the mask. So that's interesting because that and it doesn't look like the, you know, it doesn't look like the floor from Star Killer Base. So it it does strike me that something else has happened. That that's not the mask from the first movie. That there's another mask, and hmm. you know, maybe, maybe you know, shattered glass. So maybe it's like that in case of the emergency, you know, right. in case of emergency, break the glass. And get the thing. <laughs> so he had to go get his second mask out, but then something happened. That one got wrecked too. Well, seeing his temper in the Force Awakens, they have to have doubles of everything and triples. And I have to say, my favorite part of the trailer is BB-8 in a really big hurry. <laughs> he's, he's like leaned about forty-five degrees forward. He's going as fast as he can down that hallway with Poe. <laughs> I, d- I did notice with uh, the Kylo scene when he's pointing the lightsaber at us, you can see the scar on his face. Yeah. And was, were his eyes different? It seemed like it. Looked Someone like they said were a that they were yellowish. yellow, but yeah. I don't remember that. I'm I just looking at the I lightsaber coming right at us. It might have been. So now, whereas the Force Awakens trailer was really based on visuals, this was based more on story. So do you think Ray's going to be training with Luke the whole film? Like... In Empire, Luke was with uh, with Yoda about three quarters of the film. So, are we going to be happy with that, or do we want to see Ray more in action? Well, I'll t- I think you're right. I agree. This this trailer was much more about story 
The Force Awakens trailers were a lot more about world building because they had to set, set, set up for people what is the Star Wars story like now. But now we know. And Luke's been in exile for a long time. And so it's not just about Rey training with Luke. It's about Rey bringing Luke back to the rest of the galaxy. So they both have an arc to go through on Octu. And uh, I just, I just, I can't imagine. I mean, I can't imagine Luke is going to stay behind the way Yoda does on Dagobah at the end of Empire Strikes Back, where Luke leaves. I think Luke's going to come with her. And the other thing that strikes me about this trailer is very much like Force Awakens. We see, we see, we see uh, Octu. We see Crate. We see a space battle. That's about it. And so there's a whole lot of the movie they're not showing us yet. And I would be surprised. I think they'll start the movie on Octu and she'll stay there for a while. But the rest of the movie, she's they're not going to. There's only so much you can do with force training. It's a, tw- it's a 22 minute episode of Rebels, right? I mean, there's only so much you can do with <laughs> force training before you have to move the story somewhere else. Right. right. Yeah. I was we, gonna, oh, go ahead. We do see Ray running with that lightsaber near the end of the trailer. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't oh. look like Octu. It looks like somewhere else, but. Not a lot of room on that island to run around <laughs> unless Kylo comes and finds them there. That's possible. Hmm. But uh, she, we're going to get some action out of Rey. All right. Uh, now, are we disappointed we didn't see more Finn? I was hoping to see more Finn. Oh, yeah. He's we... taking a nap still. Yeah, <laughs> he is. The Arabesh says stable on his pod. Oh. That has been determined. Oh. So at least he's stable. Oh. Because, yeah. Yeah. Good. Ooh, it's like... That's cool. It's a good thing Trish is bilingual. <laughs> All right, so now let's move on to a, another panel. Did yes. anyone see the Mark Hamill panel? Almost, but we went and saw Dave Filoni instead. <laughs> oh! What was Dave doing at the same time? He, oh, here, give it to Matt. Thanks to BJ Priester telling me last night, uh, Tracy Canobio uh, t- tweeted out that he was giving out, or I'm sorry, selling and uh, signing uh, an exclusive print for, for celebration uh, in the morning, so... Uh, only a hundred of them, so we went to that, <laughs> <laughs> and we were successful. And it was yeah, it was uh, fundraising for the Starlight Foundation, which is always Aww. great. Nice. What was the print? Bo Katan. It was oh. like some like was it concept art or was it a print he put yeah, together? No, it was a uh, it was like um, concept art that he had done of Bo Katan, and uh, he signed it and all that, and just you know just the opportunity to talk to him again and yeah. And, and especially after seeing that Rebels trailer, we I really wanted to 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 thank him and tell him how much it meant to me. So. Did Did you ask him a question at all or anything? No, like that? Uh, I just I. Do you I have change for twenty. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just wanted to. Um, uh, the trailer, the panel had hit me pretty pretty hard emotionally, mm. uh, because it was it Rebels uh, continues to be my favorite show. I know it, all good things have to come to an end, and I'm glad he's able to end it on his terms. And I just wanted the chance and the opportunity to thank him for all that he's done and uh, to tell him that I can't wait for the next thing. And it was comforting to me when he told me that, you know, um, <clears throat> pardon me, that he appreciated it and uh, that I would be happy with uh, what was coming next. So. Aw, nice. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, I can confirm that... It is not going to be Droids 2.0 with AP5 and Chopper, I did ask. Though <laughs> so he didn't seem interested, and he said, eh. I think he's kind of heading like, you know, just maybe, because we added the whole thing with the traveling Chopper Lego that I take around, and he's like, hey, you're already kind of in the right direction. So that was a bit exciting. But Aww. typical Dave, you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> he's a master of, yeah, just avoiding. He's brilliant. How big was the bo print? About A3, thereabouts. That about, it's it's got a about nice uh, profile over a face and then a full body picture. Long rectangular. A, yeah, good action sort of position, yeah. Yeah, Trisha just pulled a, a, a screen cap of it. Of Hot Callus, you mean? Uh, it, no, that <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have I'm to. I'm surprised that. they didn't sell his Hot Callus. You, yeah, let's, you know what, let's, talk about, uh, let's talk about Hot Callus for a moment. <laughs> Richard's going to admire Hot Callus now. Even he has a crush on him. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, does he look more like Starsky from Starsky and Hutch? <laughs> can you see? Can, I'm sorry, he really kind of he, I know. Can you see him rolling across that, that red uh, Chevy with a white stripe on it? it see? Very 70s jacket. Yeah. He's talking about right? You have to have grown up during that time. Oh, come on. All right, Owen Wilson, okay? 
Does that help you? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Go. Now, all I'm going to see is Starsky and Hutch. But go on with Hot Callus. I interrupted. All, all I'm just grateful that, that now Hot Callus is definitely a thing that he got talked about at the Rebels panel. You know, that, that we adore him. Go on. You adore him too, right, Richard? Yes, I do. He is one, one hot hunk. Hair's out of place. And Rebels, it's always been, been about the hair. First with, with Ezra and, and Sabine, and now with, with Hot Callus. <laughs> what, what is that saying about Rebels? Or is that just a me thing? Well, we do have Steve Bloom tweeting out, Yeah, Dave Filoni, it, it really is a thing. Hashtag Hot Callus. And he has signed someone's uh, uh, Zeb picture, Carabast, Steve Bloom, hashtag Hot, hot Callus. <laughs> <laughs> David Oyelowo right now is going, yes, yes, finally a legacy. I remember there was a lot of discussion when Clone Wars first started that hair wasn't moving, so now David's rectified oh, that. Oh, there you go. With there floppy, go. hot, callous hair. <laughs> this is Melissa, and I was just going to say that I've, evidently the animation has come far enough now that they can do the, the moving hair, and even you can notice in Clone Wars how the animation evolved with the facial expressions. And the way the joints moved. In the beginning, the joints were kind of knobby on everybody. And right. they got smoother. And the lines on the face got smoother and less angular. And the expressions got better as the animation, as technology improved and as the animators improved. And I think I, you can still see that on Rebels. It's improving every season. Yeah. So what you're saying is they're overcompensating. Which is legitimate. That's legitimate. Yeah. All right. Okay. Who here spent over $100 in merchandise at Star Wars Celebration in Orlando? Ryan, Ryan, what'd you get at, at Celebration? Uh, there's been prints. There's been uh, some. There's been some justice. There's been some rectification of previous wrongs. Oh. <laughs> uh, when in the late '90s, I was uh, living overseas. My mother went back to Australia to uh, visit my grandmother, and while she was there, she did a bit of a clean out at the house. Oh no! Almost every action figure gone, but we picked up a few. My favorite of all time was my. Kenner TIE Fighter Pilot, and I picked up one today. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Not for $100. It was like 10 nice. bucks, but All right. there have been things. It's been great. Did anyone else spend in a, an obscene amount of money? I, I will not reveal the exact amount, but it has, it has four digits. And, <laughs> and, and a decimal? That, and that, not including the decimal. Oh. Uh, but that includes shirts that we got for a number of our friends that couldn't come to the con. Um, and... Uh, people who write for the blog and the podcast, um, several hundred dollars worth of art from the art show um, as well, and then pin the pin sets are twenty two dollars each, so that you know that adds up fast. But uh, as I said before the con, it cost thousands and thousands of dollars to go to London last year, so I could spend a lot this year and still break even <laughs> on the budget. So I'm not worried. The drive from Jacksonville. You know, it cost me 20 bucks a gas, so, so it's all good. <laughs> all right. All with the law of averages. This is David again. Uh, we splurged on the stay. We splurged on the stay with the, uh, the Hyatt. Rather than spend a lot of money on merchandise, I may be at the most $200 in stuff, but being able to come out here is, is priceless, and being able to see everybody again is whatever you spent. That's, 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 that's non, not even an issue. We're all together again. That's the important thing. Oh, dude. Aww. Aww. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my wife flying me out here is a Christmas surprise. That was her spending it, so that doesn't count as me. <laughs> <laughs> her nice. money is her money. Your money is her money. <gasps> but thank you to everyone here who has been so generous to me. Uh, this is Matt Clifton again. Uh, like David, I, I um, kind of splurged on this hotel, but I... Uh, wanted to be as close to the convention center as possible, so I'd be able to uh, uh, sleep sleep over if necessary and all that. And mostly, I just I wanted to show my friend from Australia a really good time, and I think I've been successful. Oh, so. how how is it being so close, like to to the hotel? It's is it, like, handy. Totally worth it. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 absolutely amazing because you just uh, you don't have to worry about an Uber or anything like that. You just go across the street, and and 
uh, check out the line if you are if need be or anything like that. And if you uh, grab a lot of stuff from the, the merch merch room, you can just walk across the street, go back to your room, and drop off, and then right back there. So yeah, it's uh, accessibility has been uh, really really convenient for this convention, and I think um, really. Um, uh, important. We'll go with that. Important. Okay. Yeah, we didn't really buy that much, Sarah. We, we bought the prints from Matt Bush and Lindsay. Mm-hmm. We bought the cantina. Which actually were gifts from my parents for Easter. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> love the in-laws. <laughs> yes. And then we got the, the cantina itty-bitties from Hallmark. Yes. Had to have those. Those were like the only exclusives we got. <laughs> the Hallmark stuff. Yeah. Cute. But Gentle Giant was selling a box full of styrofoam. Which was the Dianoga? Yeah, it was a, a de- really? yeah. They're replicating the. It's like the how they're replicating all the oh. vintage figures. They're replicating the vintage trash compactor playset. But this time for eighty five dollars, you got a box of styrofoam. I'm not even sure you got a Dianoga. Was there a Dianoga included in there? It's on the box. I hope so. <laughs> I just saw a box of styrofoam. I didn't. I didn't see a green Dianoga in there. I don't know. I hope that for eighty five dollars, there better be. I'm wondering if they're going to build a Death Star playset to go with all these figures. Oh, that'd be like 15 feet tall. Oh, I, I would have to get that. You know, okay. we could play in that thing. That would be awesome. Trisha Bar? Where would you put that? Anywhere it wants to go. You would have to do an extension onto your house. Done. Done. Get rid of the pool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Get rid of the neighbors. <laughs> and <laughs> their dogs. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Anyone else have a suspending story? Yeah, actually, yes. I this is my first, very first celebration. Woohoo! All right. So I tried not Andra. to go too crazy, um, but I did go to the Lounge Fly oh. <laughs> booth and BB-8 coin purse. I mean, it was just a lot of things that I've wanted to buy. So it was it was calling me. It was calling me. So I went over and just started grabbing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I bought. I purchased a lot of things for some of my friends who couldn't, you know, who couldn't be here. So, um, as gifts, and then a lot of people who help us on the, you know, the fan girls going road that support us. So I made sure I just, you know, picked up a couple of treats for them. So I didn't overspend too much because I am living on a teacher salary. Um, but it was, you know, I, I, it was over a hundred, but I didn't go like four digits or you know, what I mean, I didn't hold four hundred or anything like that. <laughs> but overall, but it was. It was okay, not too much. Okay. I was very good. I only bought one big item. I bought the Hera t shirt, you know, long sleeve t shirt for the her universe at the celebration store. That says Hera on it, right? Correct. And then the A well, is her head. You have control. You must learn control. She <laughs> did. Uh, this is Melissa, and um, I did not buy a lot. Um, I'm living on a librarian salary, <laughs> like Sandra here. Um, they're not uh, – <laughs> government doesn't pay well. <laughs> um, but I had to buy myself the lightsaber immersion blender <gasps> I found. The um, what? <laughs> the what? <laughs> the immersion – one of those blenders that you stick it in the cup and it it's does like it for you. Like a little but motorboat. But they handle <laughs> – <laughs> the handle is a lightsaber hilt, and the um, stem part is colored for a lightsaber, so it's Anakin's lightsaber. And um, it's to go with my Death Star waffle maker that my best friend bought me for Christmas. And I also had to buy the um, spatulas. Oh. That I, I don't know which booth it was. It's near the, it was near the Disney Parks booth in the way back corner. Nice. And they had um, kitchen utensils and things. And my mom and I baked, so we had to buy a Rebels one. And it, it had the Rebel Starbird and Rebel and Gold, and there was another one that we bought um, that had gold on it. I don't remember what. I think it had the Death Star. I don't remember. Nice. Kitchen right. tools. Yay. Kitchen tools. Awesome. Hey, this is Luann. I just wanted to say that we found out about a Goodwill area. Did you guys go there? No. Oh, my God. It was awesome being the uh, garage sale Goodwill thrift store girl. Whoa. I got a really cool shirt, and you got a couple things. Oh, and we have something for your your little one to take to Australia. Yay. So that was fun. I've never seen such a thing at a big convention was like that. that. A, it was a booth or is it an actual area? Yeah, a booth. Okay, wow. Yeah, it was awesome. Oh. You know, hey, why not? It was good stuff. As long as it wasn't 
like had a stain or something. It was cool. I'm like, hey, yeah, I picked up a money. picked up a Hallmark ornament that I was missing. Yeah, so uh, it worked out. Awesome. One more thing, I'm just going to tell you about my husband and the D- and the exhibit room. I was looking for him on Thursday, and I said, "Where are you at?" He had one word text back to me: heaven. <laughs> no, I think that's what we all think of Star Wars Celebration. Oh, Aww. very nice, very nice. We didn't spend that that much on the merchandise because we spent a lot of money on the parties and such. Oh yeah, and the stuff afterwards. Did we all go to the 501st bash last yeah. night? Yeah, some of us. Are we still all hungover? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> what about- Trisha, I'm looking at you. I slept it off. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Galactic Nights? Yeah, Galactic we had a Nights, fun time. Yeah, we were looking to really replicate the last tour to Endor back in 2010, and I think this really did it. Oh, so yeah. much fun there. Yeah, I think from beginning to end, we were we had a group of... For anywhere from 10 to 15 people at any given time. It was really yeah. fun. Yeah, it was fun meeting all the Skywalkers for the first time and getting our Star Wars picture in front of the where the Star Wars land is going to be, the Star Wars land yeah. line picture. Yeah. That was great. And as always, got to love Disney printing a special pin that not only says Star Wars Galactic Nights, but Star Wars Galactic Nights April 14th, 2017. So I probably should have bought ten of those <laughs> to sell them to the pin people, but I only bought one. Uh, but yeah, it was really neat. It was a neat event. They did the for the second time, I believe, the uh, rock and roller coaster switched off of Aerosmith music, yeah, to Star Wars music. I believe the only other time they've done that was for the special uh, event they did for the Force Awakens right. world premiere wow. night uh, that they did at Hollywood Studios two years ago. Yeah, that was neat. You were, like, actually flying through the asteroid field with the asteroid field. Yeah, they turned off all the lights Mm -hmm. on the Aerosmith signs. (laughs) So you could see them if you know where they are because there wasn't pitch black. But but they turned off all the lights on them and then left a few of the other lights on so that essentially the way it was reflecting off all the the beams in the ride made it look like a star field. So that was – and you're going fast enough that the optical (laughs) illusion works. So it was – that was really cool, riding star tours with a bunch of people from – that celebration too. was really cool. And you know what else was really cool? That I was the rebel spy. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah. For Once. Sake. How then, many times? And then Stop who, it. who was the rebel spy the second time? Uh, it wasn't Trisha? me. It was Sarah's boob in my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that. We don't know. They were aiming in a strange place, <laughs> but that's what it was. Erica Kane. <laughs> twice, twice in one night. I'm glad it was you, sweetie. I am really glad, uh-huh. but I'm, at the same time, I'm really angry. You're really upset. Yes, I know. yes. You know, it's not bad that you were you were it once, but twice. Come on, I'm trying to be supportive here. <laughs> one other thought on Galactic Nights. They had a lot of the food they had done previously at Star Wars Weekends, which was good to see again. But they had something that I believe I thought was new. I had never seen it before, which was the lightsaber brownie sundae. What? Which was a brownie sundae with two churros stuck in it, one with red sugar and one with blue sugar, so that it was two churro lightsabers with the brownie sundae. That was spectacular, and I hope they have it every day forever and ever. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Do you know what's more depressing than me not being Rebel Spy? Uh-huh. Twice. The fact that they're popping that big balloon bantha downstairs. <gasps> this was the balloon bantha from the 501st bash. Okay. They're euthanizing the bantha. Oh! And they do back. Oh. <laughs> you know what? Can you ask them to bring it up? Ask them to bring it up. We need, we need it for the podcast. <laughs> Any other stories about Galactic Knights? Just on the uh, Rebel Spy, I think clearly, clearly, it it is because you're such a professional Rebel Intelligence operative (laughs) that they can't pick that out. Oh, that's obvious. Oh, that's what it is. I like that. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. Let's go with that. that. All right, then then for the, the, what's the uh, parade called? Oh, the stars the, and cars. Oh, the stars, yeah, the motorcade. The motorcade. The celebrity mm. motorcade. Uh, yeah, Teresa kn- knew the best spot to be for that, which was right at the entrance. And when she st- when she staked out that spot, there was no one around. So we took our whole group over there, our entourage, and we got some great shots of 
our celebrities. And who are the celebrities? We had Daniel Logan. Daniel which Logan. I insisted on calling Jeremy Bullock. He liked that. Was it Dan? Daniel Logan? Daniel Logan. Oh, yeah. John Our, Knoll. John Knoll came out. Peter Mayhew. Mm -hmm. Anthony Daniels. Who else? Warwick Davis. Warwick, Warwick Davis. Davis. Alan Tudyk. Alan oh, Tudyk. yeah. Alan Tudyk. And, and Vanessa Marshall. And Vanessa Marshall. Yeah. So that was really neat. And then the, the fireworks show. <gasps> yeah, that was amazing. Now, we have not been to see this fireworks show, which I guess they've modified to include Rogue One clips. Oh, my God. That, that was, that that was, was amazing. So cool. that was a, it was projected on the, the uh -oh. Uh -oh. T TCL Chinese Not Man's Theater IMAX. Yes. That's it? IMAX, yes. yes! There you go. So it was projected onto this theater, and it was just so, so well done, so well choreographed, and it had different projections on different screens, too. And it had the lasers the coming lasers out at you. The lasers coming out at you. It had smoke, it had the music. It was just fantastic. And then at the end, a big lightsaber. Oh, it reminded, big, oh. me, it reminded me of our old fangirls going rogue logo. <laughs> You know, oh, yeah, the, the, the beam, lightsaber with right, the, the beam, the hands. like a big spotlight. Yeah. That so was that funny. was that was fantastic. And yeah. all right, so then let's let's talk about today and the hoojib hop. <gasps> hoojib hop. And David Mandervillian is still wearing his his hoojib ears. Very good. And we wanted to do something to to celebrate Easter. Yep. So what better way than to wear hoojib ears and bounce around celeb the celebration dealer room floor? And we want to give a big shout out to to Amanda Bond, who made all these hoojib ears. Thank you, thank you, Amanda. Like they, they look fantastic. Amanda. Random strangers Woo! were coming over and wanting a pair of hoojib ears. Oh yes. So we all got together. We went from place to place to place to place. Mm -hmm. Went over to Matt Bush and Lindsay's booth and uh -huh. took a big selfie. Oh, well, we went to the Rancho Obi Wan and scared, freaked out, uh, freaked out. Stephen Sansweet Sand made him wear the pink bunny ears. <laughs> That was fun. Yeah. And then we went over to Randy. the Star Wars show, which, which was not recording right then and there. But we, all, we ran into Adam Bray. That's right. Randy Martinez. We stopped there. Randy his Martinez. Booth on the way. We stopped there, yes. And we ran into a Darth Vader, which we put big bun bunny ears on him. Yeah. And, and the, yeah. the family guy chicken. Yeah. And the, the whole idea for the Hoojip Hop was just to hop around the, the dealer room floor and getting group pictures, pictures, group basically. pictures and with, with hashtag, in certain spots. Hashtag Team Hoojib. Yes. And we Andy Bresnikin and his family. And Anthony Bresnikin showed up. Yeah. And Mandalorian Mary Jail. Mary we went Frank. to jail. We, we were in jail. Mandalorian, right? Mandalorian oh, yes. Jail. Yes, yes. And Mandalorian Merc. They had a, a booth, not a booth, but an area on the floor. Yeah, and they yeah. had different photo spots. We went to uh, their, their jail cell. It was super fun. Yeah. And then, yeah, Anthony Bresnikin was able to tweet out before I could tweet out the picture and was so excited about the hoojibs. And there's a conversation going on right now on Twitter between Leland Chi and Anthony Bresnikin and, uh, and what, um, who's the Pablo? other? Pablo? Pablo, about whether hoojibs are going to be in it or not in the universe. Oh. But, but We're taking credit for that, guys. We're yes, taking credit for that. I totally agree. We take credit for but it. But this is what he said. And Anthony Bresnikin was just saying that he had bought his daughter the Planet of the Hoojibs record book. Yeah. Like, oh, keep it alive. So she wanted a picture with us. That was super cute. Uh, let me see. Oh, here we go. Leland Chi, based on whether hoojibs are going to be in universe or not, says it isn't until it is. Ooh, take it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Final answer. That's a start. Yes. Got to start somewhere. No, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 So, I thought that was fun. All right. So before we wind down here, do we have a favorite cosplayer? Aside from Luann's awesome, mm. awesome size noodles, mm -hmm. was there any other cosplayers that we really loved? Um, I'm going to have to give it out for me anyway. Uh, Sophia and Chaney Hunt as uh, Bo-Katan and Sabine Wren. Right. Yep, I was about to say that. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy did an amazing, yep. for his first time doing costumes, that was amazing. Yeah, this is Matt Clifton again. Uh, there's a cosplayer I follow who goes by the tag uh, Miss Sinister. She did an absolutely an amazing uh, Ventress cosplay uh, this last Dragon Con. And when I heard that she was going to be at Celebration, I was got very excited. And she did her uh, famous Lady Sith 
our original cosplay, but did it a little different with a different hairstyle this time around that she's done uh, different than she's done before at a previous Dragon Con. So it was it was still new, and she just is an absolutely amazing uh, cosplayer to see and get a picture with. So that that was my favorite. This is David. I didn't see uh, any one specific one that really blew me away, like just wow. But I saw several that were, you know, runners up. There was a giant space trooper on the floor oh, at some point taking pictures with everybody. I mean, this thing was 10 foot tall, and the guy just was squeezed into it and had four people helping him get dressed. It was pretty impressive. Uh, and then there was a large group that I'd never seen before, a group called the Rouge One, and they were dressed in very formal attire, dresses and skirts and very frilly and everything. It was a Vader dressed in a nice dapper suit and red, <laughs> like a red tux and a Thai pilot with a dress, which Ryan would love. <laughs> but they were really beautiful, and I've got a good picture of that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're all passing them around on our phones right now because we've been taking pictures of all these cosplayers. Yeah. Now, Ryan, is a picture of you with Darth Jackson. <laughs> what? That is awesome. So it's, it's Jackson, our beloved character from the classic Marvel Star Wars comics. And he's, he's got a, a Jedi, a Sith hood, and a red lightsaber. How did we not see this? I don't know. This is super exciting. Awesome. You know what? That's because we weren't ever on the show floor very much to see all this cosplay. <laughs> yeah, I, they were just taking a break. There was a group of them, a bunch of dark side looking guys just after the uh ahsoka lives day they were just just uh, that area down there just near the it was a bit of a food court and uh there was also a uh what was it very sort of good the bad and the ugly mexican kind of themed uh obi Wan kenobi oh. that i could not resist <laughs> he's got his poncho and sombrero and he was just he couldn't be cooler he was sweet Oh, that is okay. awesome. Love those all those mashups. My hu- uh, my husband saw this one, so he told me about it. I didn't see it, but he said there was a really good female Thrawn cosplayer. Oh, I saw her. So oh. good that when my husband went, you know, he was checking out the, the Barnes & Noble booth, and Timothy Zahn was signing at the time. She was coming up to him with the book. He was so excited to see it. He had to stop the signing, had to get up. Had to go and t- t- have his staff take pictures of her, and Aww. it like stopped the line for like five to ten minutes. Wow! He took pictures of it. So once I get those from him, I will share them with you, so you can put them on with the material at the Facebook group and all that. Amazing! Yeah, we had asked Timothy's on when we had met him, Sarah. What's it like seeing people dressed up in your creations? And he still finds it very surreal. Yeah, like it's not real. Like yeah. exactly. Yeah, well, that's what surreal means. Right. <laughs> <laughs> This is what happens when you're exhausted, yes. <laughs> but to see such a, a creative <laughs> departure from that and being a female, you know that's got to even, even make him feel so much better because someone took his creativity and went one step further with it. Now, this, this is a, a cosplaying outfit I really like. This is our, yes. our little friend Kaya mm-hmm. dressed up as an angel Leia. Yeah, go ahead and pass that around. And Aww. she actually has an, a- an angel outfit. She has the Leia buns, and then on top, she has a halo that's made out of a lightsaber that lights up. A round halo right round. around her head. It's, it's a, amazing. It's a, a blue lightsaber. Super uh, cute. That's the cutest thing. Oh, what? And that is so original. It is. You know, this con especially, like whenever I saw any dress-ups of Princess Leia, any cosplays, it just kind of tugged at my heartstrings. <laughs> I know. And that's, that's one reason why I wore Princess Leia at this, at this convention, so... So we're all passing this around. Isn't that the, just the most adorable thing ever? <laughs> I have a different one. Jonah Marie and Aaron Goins dressed up as the Freemaker Adventure characters, <laughs> mm-hmm. so you don't get to see that a lot. But if you want to pass that around, that was Gosh. fun to see them do that. I think that's the first time I've ever seen Freemaker cosplayers. Mm-hmm. And there was someone who actually created a... Uh, a Roger. A Roger. I Thank saw you. It, yes. A Roger, and he went to the panel, and Amy Ratcliffe saw him, and was like, "Oh, we got to get you VIP seats right up front because we want the guys to see it." So yeah, of course, when all the Free Maker Adventures creators came out, uh, they they made references, and then at the end, right after we had screened the first uh, the first episode of the second season, uh, Matt Wood came out on stage and did his voice oh. he did the voice right there and was like super excited to see and he was the exact height of 
the the uh, Roger Roger. Roger Roger. <laughs> nice. I got nice. some great pictures. Be sharing. The picture right now. I'm looking at my phone of <gasps> me and Gormanda, <laughs> the the Harvey Korman chef from the Star Wars Holiday Special. That was awesome. <laughs> I see about one holiday special cosplaying yeah. cosplayer per convention. So this is the one I saw here. Awesome. And then before, when we were heading up over here, Sarah, you and I saw this a Jawa with a BB-8 on his back. Yeah. A very creative cosplaying outfit where... Like the Jawa was stealing BB-8. Yeah, right? yeah. Had him in, in a pack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was a, it was a puppeteer. The person's head was in BB-8's head. Yeah. And his arms controlled the, the Jawa's uh, head and, and arms. Very, very creative. Yeah. Oh, this is Luann again. I don't know. Like, if you had the chance to go to the 501st, uh, many of us did. Did you see Yoda? <gasps> yeah. Yes. Life oh size. God, I was blown away. Life size. Was I was very blown small. away, and I, I felt it. I felt it. I was just in the moment. It was so fantastic. Oh my god. <laughs> How much have you been drinking? No, I'm no, just no, kidding. no. I know it was amazing. It was so fantastic. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Did you kiss so Yoda? Five of first. I tried. I asked for a kiss, and he said he went like this instead, and it was just. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I he... melted. I melted. I melted. Whoever was in there, he or she, went very slowly. Yes, and yes, yes. everyone wanted a picture. Oh, it was fantastic. Oh, my God. There's also a picture, and for some reason I didn't get it, of a great Jar Jar. Oh, a great Jar Jar yes, Binks. At the, I've at got the a picture with Jar Jar. <gasps> Do you? Yeah. You know what else was really cool? Uh, the- hold on. A, oh, hold on. There's a picture of <laughs> the way I'm trying to kiss Yoda. Uh, <laughs> It yeah. was so awesome. You're going to go to the Facebook group and post those pictures. Yes, yes, those yes, absolutely. Hilarious. absolutely. Now, uh, one of the things, Weird Al, of course, performed at the 501st party. And when he was done, well, we didn't want the crowd to go, oh, sad. So they sent four Twi'leks up and do to do silk, like, yoga, dancing, whatever, mesmerizing. Yeah, it was it was amazing. And their their outfits were just incredible. And their leku were definitely made of latex, latex of or foam latex. Yeah, they were like made of foam latex. Like they, they were just great. It, it was, it was really cool. So it was funny because after everyone saw Weird Al, everyone these these Twilight suddenly rose up on these wheels, awesome. and and the whole crowd was like, ah, uh, they just moved over, you know, like <laughs> as one group. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't see that. Oh, yeah, because Brian Sims was buying me, like, four or five drinks. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. He was trying to get me drunk. <laughs> because the, the, more, the more I drink, the quieter I get. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, should we wrap it up by saying, what did we take away from this convention we're going to take to Celebration 2019? Until we know where, it's hard to plan. Hard to get excited or... and really, because it's like, it's going to happen, but we don't want to tell you where yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think for next celebration, Star Wars is going to be in a very different place. By the time we have a next celebration, depending on what time of year they put it in, it could if they hold it in the summer of 2019 to time it with Star Wars Land, mm-hmm. we could be celebrating the opening of the lands at the parks. Last Jedi will already be out. Rebels will be over, and a new animated series will have started. So Star Wars, you know, Fran- and we'll probably know at least two more spinoff movies. Maybe three have been announced by that point. So the the, fan, the franchise and the fandom could be in a very different place compared to where they are now, uh, even in just two years. And that's it's sort of daunting because we don't know anything, but it's also kind of incredible to think how much. And I also just reflecting on when we were here in Orlando in 2012 for Celebration 6. It was in August of 2012. Mm-hmm. And... You know, it was it was a good con, but Star Wars was in a weird place then because it was detours. <laughs> yeah, and maybe, and I still thir- have my shirt and, from that panel. And thirteen, thirteen, and Underworld, and there weren't going to be any movies, and there was a live action TV, and Clone Wars had ended. It was, uh, I guess, hadn't ended yet, but no, yet. it was it was you know we were in like the fifth season of Clone Wars. And we knew that you knew it wouldn't go forever, and uh, and then within two months, you know, you had. The Disney sale and the new movies and all these people from Lucasfilm having been walking around the con lying to everybody about what was happening with the company, which is sort of fun. But but Celebration <laughs> 6 was was uh, you're sort of like, okay, well, this is Star Wars is fun, but yay. Whereas this con, the future is wide open. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of exciting content coming. And even though we don't know what it is, it's the, the trajectory is just up 
up and away from here, and that's really exciting for me. Yeah. I predict because I had heard that Star Wars Land was going to open in the fall of 2019, it would be a missed opportunity if they did not open it around Star Wars. If they, Star Wars Land did not open the same week or weekend as Celebration. They have to, they've got to tie those two together. Maybe do a soft opening one of the nights. That would be oh. phenomenal. That would be cool. Hmm. Good luck in tickets. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, already sold out. Yeah, really. <laughs> you know what? We've already started a Star Wars landline. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. get first dibs. <laughs> first dibs. I can say we were all very well prepared for this celebration, thanks to the Celebration Survival Guides Part One and Two. Thanks to Mr. Matt Clifton, Matt Clifton right over here for taking all those notes and coming on and helping everyone skywalk through Star Wars Celebration Orlando. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for joining us. And until the next Star Wars celebration, always remember... Never land on Alderaan! Yippee! Yep, yeah. (laughs) Now let's sing more show tunes. That wraps up episode 165 of Skywalking Skywalking Through Through Neverland. Neverland. We would like to thank all the Skywalkers who met up with us throughout the whole weekend and all of you Skywalkers for taking the time out of your schedules and listening. Now, just as a note, our Skywalker family t-shirt, which says, The Force is Strong in our family of Skywalkers. Now, with the Star Wars Celebration Orlando 2017 brand that will be available for a limited time only so only one more month and then i am taking off that branding all right and just to let you know on t public there will be one more sale i believe coming up this coming weekend so there will be another 14 dollar t-shirt sale so that's april 22nd and 23rd mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's kind of wednesday through sunday actually so it's coming up now now once again we want to remind everyone to please send them their mp3s of their personal Star Wars story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can basically just do a voice memo on your phone. Yeah. We really want to hear from the 1977 first generation fans, but everyone else too. But I really want to hear how Star Wars affected them personally at, you know, very specifically at that time. What did they do? Did they buy the t-shirts and wear one a week? Did they buy all the tops cards and they spend all their money on the comic books, the classic Marvel Star Wars comics. Were you obsessed with the music? And what was it like seeing Star Wars for that first time? So anything having to do with with Star Wars in 1977. And once again, people like you, Sarah, you're, yes. you're, you're also included. Yes. We want to hear how Star Wars affected the other generations, how they first saw, when they first saw the first movie, how how it changed their life. I know you said that you had made a lot of friends because of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Well, I recruited all my friends into (laughs) being Star Wars lovers, basically, is what happened. Uh, Yeah, so so I I have some specific stories there, and if you have a specific story to share, please email that over to share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. All right, now let's tell everyone about the awesome shows over at retrozap.com, and now we know who these people are. Because yeah. we, we met them all. We met them. Oh, my goodness. For the goodness. first time, I met Joe Tavano of Bruise and Blasters. I, I didn't get a chance to meet Chris Salton, though. I did meet Chris, so yay. I was excited. And also, we met Dennis Keithley and Darth Taxes we had already met. And they are from Starship Sabres and Scoundrels. Now, I met, oh, oh no, what's his name? At the Rebels Pilot panel, I met the gentleman from the Sandcrawler podcast, because we both asked a question. We're sitting next to each other. Oh, cool. Oh, my mind is blanking out, and I'm really sorry. Well, we met Suara from Beltway Banthas, so that was awesome. And from the Deuce cast, we finally met David Dollar and, and Michael Nip and Michael Nip Galactic Knights in person. Finally, I know. Finally, we know who these people are, except for the gentleman who's host of the of the Sandcrawler podcast. That's my bad. That's my bad. And I did meet someone from Talking Apes TV. <gasps> That was me. I met uh, myself. That was you. Yeah. But we did meet Red Five Mom from mm-hmm. Kanata's Castle. And we did run into Jedi Schwa, oh, Joshua yes. Stolte from Techno Retro Dads. Mm-hmm. Jedi Schwa is Chaz Bazaar and or Hondo. Yep. And Jared Colby on Facebook is asking, did you get the basket full of Ewoks at Celebration? If you're referring to the basket of Ewoks that we had in the, in the background a couple of weeks ago, 
Now we got our own basket for five ninety nine and filled it with our own Ewoks. Yeah. Save about a hundred bucks. <laughs> Now, Sarah, for all the new Skywalkers out there, if they want to get a hold of us, how would they go about doing that? Well, they can follow us anywhere on social media. We are at Skywalking Pod for Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. And our Facebook group is where you can get to know the family of Skywalkers. It is an amazing group. We do all sorts of meetups all over the world now, I guess. Not even just at celebrations or here in L.A. There's other Skywalkers who are hosting other meetups. So that is exciting, and to join that, all you have to do is request to join the Facebook group, so you search Facebook for Skywalking Through Neverland, and then you have to find us somewhere else on social media, and message us or tweet us and say, hey, I requested to join the group, and I am a part of the family of Skywalkers, and then we will let you in the group. But you have to do that two-step process, okay? It's very important. All right. Now, with that, we also want to mention everyone to please give us some iTunes reviews. <gasps> Ooh, that yeah. would be good. One star or five stars, it's all good. We want to hear what you honestly think. You know what? We don't have any four-star reviews. Shh. No, that's, okay. Oh. that's okay. Let's let's go with the five stars or the one stars. <laughs> <laughs> or just, you know, we're not going to tell you to write anything. Just You guys just be honest. Be honest. And that was a lot of fun. During the meetups with everyone, we got a chance to ask him, hey, so what's working for you? What's, what is not working for you? Mm-hmm. What's your favorite part of the show? So we did some, some market research over the weekend. That was really, really helpful. It was. Yeah, so spoiler alert, everyone said there was, there, they could honestly say that there was nothing they didn't like. Okay, and people said they really liked the Disney stuff. Yeah. Which, so we'll keep, on, we'll keep on putting that in. And speaking of Disney stuff, in a couple of hours, we're heading off to Disney Studios to see a press screening of Guardians of the Galaxy 2. We're so excited! So excited ah. about that. So we will let you know our thoughts on that next week. Yeah. All right, everyone, we got to take off. Got to start getting ready. So stay tuned after the credits for some show tunes that we just broke into <laughs> very spontaneously before and after the debriefing. Mm-hmm. Then right after that... Always remember to never open your vintage recreation action figures. Unless you really want to and you have a wife who wants it. Even then, don't do it. Never land on Alderaan. To our Skywalkers and Tweetwalkers, thanks for listening. Skywalking Through Neverland is created and produced by Richard and Sarah Woloski. Original music by Rob Dellinger. Creative consultant, Mark Agushowitz. Technical advisor, Peter Heitman. Facebook administrators, Donald Wicks, Joey Pittman, and Norma Heitman. Skywalking Through Neverland is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Any sounds, music, and clips played during this podcast are the property of their copyright holders. All original content is property of Skywalking Through Neverland, all rights reserved. Sorry, had to be said. On the Copa. The Copa and Banna. The Hot Copa and Banna. I know, right? I was thinking something more like, Summer loving had me a blast. Summer loving happened so fast. Sandra checked out of this song. She did not want to participate at all. Did they go very far? Uh, uh, yeah, neither do I. I don't know when to stop this recording. It's too much fun. Well, uh, well, uh, well, uh, well, uh, well, uh, well, Snooty. I'm Yay. so sorry I shot you, Sarah. Right. This is so extra. You don't have to record this. But actually, today is the second anniversary since I joined Team Fangirls Going Rogue. No way. Yes, Yay. it is. It is. Sweet. Yep, April 16th. So I'm a little excited. So thank you, Trisha, Sarah, and Teresa, who's not here. Thank you so much. Happy Easter, everybody. Yes. Really, Happy truly. Easter. Happy you know, New with the holiday, you, you plan so much and try to do so much, but I can't imagine it being better, any better than this. I know. I really. I know. Really. Really, and really. now we'll get yeah. back to our, our Charlie Brown buffet. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Sweet. And I'll find out exactly what a Tim Tam is. There it is. Yes. It's your turn. No, not yet. 
Mm. Oh. Oh, good. Who got me? Oh, good. All the way from Australia. Mm. That is our greatest export. Hi, Captain Rex. And as usual, that was next year. Are you hulking out? <laughs> Hulk eat. Hulk eat. <laughs> Let it out. want to shout it out. <laughs> These are the... That's a whole different you song. You messed That's... me up. You messed it up. <laughs> See, whenever I start singing, I just mess everything up. <laughs>